Welcome, welcome back to Boss and Cage Podcast. So today's show is going to be an interesting show, and we're going to talk about an interesting topic that you would not think that is related to business. But, you know, I think obviously when you're talking about partnership, you're talking about behind the scenes, behind every great leader, there's usually nine out of 10 times a great individual person that's supporting them and backing them up. So this guest, I'm going to deem her with the nickname, the dating boss. So Lily, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell our audience a little bit more about you and what are we talking about today? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. So yeah, my name is Lily Walford. I'm an international dating and relationship coach, but with a bit of a twist as we use uh, military grade psychology to be able to read people at an insane level. So we can profile people within six minutes or less, and we can read um, body language better than a polygraph machine. So we believe in building relationships from the truth so people can meet the right one um, within six months or less. So first of all, I like the fact that you said military grade precision, right? Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, you're like <laughs> it's like you're dropping a bomb on someone's heart in, in this situation and you're making them kind of like you're like the um, the Cupid of what you do. So like, let's just talk a little bit more about like you for, for a little bit, right? Like if you could define yourself in three to five words, what would those words be? Oh, wow. Um, I would say... Ooh, I'd say ambitious. I would say um, connected because I love people like social. Um, oh gosh, yeah, it's funny. I've never been asked that before in my life. And I would say I've got a freaking badass sense of humor. So. <laughs> nice, nice. So, I mean, with, with that sense of humor, I think that that probably comes into play into what you're doing, right? I mean, you have mm-hmm. to probably bring people out their turtle shells at times and you probably have to bring people down off their high hills at times. So like, let's just talk about that. Like, like what is it that you actually do? Now you're saying you're doing military grade precision and you're doing all the psychology behind the scenes, but for a layman person, for someone that, that's <laughs> looking at you right now with the, the, the deer and headlight stare, what are you actually <laughs> going to help them do? Yeah. So we actually support people through um, everything from healing because obviously if you've gone into either a toxic relationship or you've had a bad breakup or you've been with narcissists or anything like that, that's really important. We actually look at the elements of childhood patterns as well, because our childhood patterns um, uh, has a huge influence on our success, our relationships, our career, our friendships, everything. So when we can define what's happening there, we can actually understand what's happening in their relationships as well, from the types of partners that they're actually um, connecting with, to even what happens in that relationship and the way it unfolds. So from there, we actually create then a compatibility matrix. So I actually work with people say, okay, who's actually right for you? Because you can put someone out there and get them dating, but if they're meeting the wrong ones, well, they're only going to be short-term flings versus something that's long-term. And then um, from that compatibility matrix, we create a unique dating strategy. So whether that's meeting people online or meeting people organically, Mm -hmm. we create something personalized to that person who they're compatible with. And then we go on to actually develop that healthy, loving relationship. So those are the people that that meet someone whilst they're working with us. They get access to all the course materials and everything as well. So they can build a healthy relationship together. Nice, nice. So, I mean, obviously, I think in today's world, some people are probably way more open to utilizing some platform like that or asking for help or going to an app. So with that, right, like how difficult has it been for you to kind of step into that space? Because, I mean, there are online solutions that are not necessarily doing what you're doing, but could help <laughs> someone find the right person. So what's your unique factor to what you do versus using an online app? Yeah, so it's funny, like online apps, the main issues with those is that actually 50% of people are already in relationships on online dating profiles um, uh, and 12% of those people are actually or you know are actually married so we are we, we actually train our clients to uh, see the deception mm. so they can read an online dating profile and understand if someone's safe to be with or not um, uh, they can actually see okay from a date from a dating profile whether that person has the ability to be compatible with them or not 
So when we're talking about understanding and reading people to be able to have that connection, we're talking about doing this at an insane level to the point where it, we can actually potentially help people, um, you know, save their lives or even keep their children safe if they've got children, you know, this type of thing. I mean, for example, I actually had a um, uh, someone reach out to me and share a dating profile with me. And I literally turned around to him and said, whatever you do, do not go and meet this person. Mm. And uh, it was literally from uh, just the three photos they shared with me. And it showed me that this person had no emotional range, which meant no empathy, which mean, meant that they were more likely to be either narcissistic or even psychopathic or even a sociopath. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's that's kind of creepy when, when you think about it. So like, Okay, let's, let's talk about you, right? So, I mean, mm. like, you could analyze things like that on the fly and you've been doing it for years and you have these systems in place. So I want to go back to like your childhood. Like what kind of kid were you? Were you like the kid that had like a checklist before you dated someone or were you just flying in blind? Like, I mean, what was your dating life like growing up? Oh gosh, well, I, to be honest, it, this is the thing that actually got me to want to go down like the, the relationship and dating route because I had a fantastic childhood. Um, um, my career path, I actually started out as an accountant and I worked for wow. Fortune 100 companies, um, you know, international companies and those bits and pieces. But I was, yeah, I was super lucky, amazing childhood. I was the goody two shoes. Um, so I'd be the people pleaser. I would also be the, the kid who, you know, if they fell over, I would be screaming about it until I got all the attention I needed. That was the type of child that I was. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, it was funny because the first, the first few relationships I had, it was more about like, oh, wow, someone's taken an interest in me. And I always had this thing of wanting to see the best in someone. So I could look at someone and see their potential, fall in love with the potential. And then, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> come back down to the ground with a bump, um, uh, realizing the reality. So one of the first proper relationships I had was actually with a, with a narcissist. And uh, he, was a, he was a police officer and borderline psychopathic. And uh, I didn't have a clue what this was at the time. I just thought, oh, okay, well, you know, it's the first relationship is great. They've love bombed me at the beginning. So I felt really good. They took me on these amazing dates. I thought I had the fairy tale. And then boom, there was all these different things that started to come out in the woodwork. So, I mean, things like I went to one of my first works Christmas parties and uh, <laughs> My ex-partner decided to insult my boss and make things difficult of my work, started to make things difficult with my family. Mm -hmm. um, because what they actually do is they do things to isolate people. So when they isolate their, their partner, it means that they are solely reliant on that person. So fast forward a few years, I actually found out he was cheating on me with several different people. So he was a police officer and he was putting um, women's names in his PC and sergeant so-and-so. <laughs> so, so, you know, if I thought that someone was texting him, it was like, oh, it's work, it's fine. You know, being a very, you know, naive, um, you know, young, young person. And um, uh, so all this started to come out in the woodwork. And when that relationship ended i was even stalked for five years afterwards and um he actually started to travel i think it was like over 150 miles with his new girlfriends to recreate the pictures that we took together whilst we were in our relationship <laughs> so um yeah really intense scary stuff you know you it's funny because when you're in those situations as well, what tends to happen um, is narcissists will, will tend to start to chip away at someone's identity. Mm -hmm. And when they start to do that, it means that that person's kind of stuck in this, in this rut, basically. So even when they come out of that relationship, the simplest decision making, like what brand of milk or washing up powder, you know, to buy, it takes a five minute process. You don't understand your feelings afterwards. So the first thing that you want to do is logically talk your, talk your way out of the way that you feel. And um, 
gosh, what else? I'm just thinking. Oh, you end up getting like really cloudy thinking as well. So a lot of people I end up working with, it's almost like allowing them to rebuild their identities after those relationships because it's that intense. So, um, yeah, and basically I kind of went into like different, not so great relationships again and again after that. And there was one that I thought, oh, yeah, I've cracked it. I've found this perfect person. Got Both got fantastic jobs. We live in this amazing four-bedroom detached house. Two brand-new Mercedes on the drive. You know, it was like, you know, picture perfect, everything that I wanted. And I was only, gosh, probably about 24, 25 at the time. I'm thinking, okay, I've got it all mapped up, all mapped out and sorted. And within a weekend, it was just gone. Got a message. Um, as I got back from work saying we need to talk so within a weekend end up losing the house moved cities moved jobs um, kept the car <laughs> and um, yeah it kind of got me thinking okay what is it that people actually need to understand when it comes to having a healthy relationship hmm. so from there I ended up um, uh, becoming certified in NLP. So I became an NLP master practitioner, trainer, hypnotherapist, life coach, um, public speaker, set up my own business and I was working full time as well. So I did all that within one year. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the year, I was still trying to date and still ending up in really weird kind of situations where what one person um tried to send me a bunch of no sent me a bunch of flowers from just my first name and my profile picture so I kind of realized okay you can have all the self-confidence in the world you can have all the self-worth and all these great magical things that you get from personal development but it doesn't stop predatory type of people coming into your life or the wrong type of people coming into your life who aren't going to be right for you for a relationship so for example (laughs) you know if you get a a sheep with great self-worth and confidence a wolf doesn't turn around and go well i'm not going to eat that one (laughs) it's going to do what a wolf wants to do (laughs) wow so it's definitely interesting i mean it sounds like like your your story is building up to like who you've become it's like you had some you know bbc moments where they should have been broadcast on the news you had some <laughs> lifetime television things and you had some time you should have been sitting on dr phil's couch this is what it sounds like so right. you're taking you're taking all these elements and you're creating like a system so let's let's talk about that for for for, for a minute right now like so you went through all these different things you've got certified you started your business and then you're faced with like other people that have similar issues that you've been through so let's talk about like the worst case scenario, like, like what's the worst client without naming names that you had to kind of pull them from the dark side and how did you pull them from the dark side into the light? Oh, so yeah, there's one in particular. Oh, it's two actually. Oh goodness, Bay. Um, Okay, so let's go for the first one I thought of. So the one that, bless her heart, she kind of went through a really difficult stage. So um she went through a huge divorce and um with someone who was highly narcissistic so when i when i talk about narcissism as well i don't mean you know the you know this person loves to take selfies and look in the mirror i'm talking about someone who's been clinically diagnosed um uh, with you know narcissism so that basically means that the empathy part of the brain is actually underdeveloped so asking them to feel is almost like asking a fish to walk So what they end up doing is they end up seeing people as resources. It's almost like a pen or a mug. It's like, oh, how do I work this? How do I get what I want from this? So this particular lady, she had um, two young children as well. So going through a divorce, she was in a different country because her partner decided to move over there and she wanted to, you know, support him with his work and all these different things. And... um, uh, literally probably going through horrendous horrendous divorce i mean literally over the simplest of things he was threatening to take away her house that she was living with you know that she moved into um after they broke up he was threatening to um you know sell things that belong to the kids and um you know it was just absolutely freaking horrendous you know the lawyers were battling it out you know things were just really heated um, you know, they got to the horrible stages of calling her a bad parent and she was believing it and felt like the need to explode. And it was like this complete freaking mess of a situation. 
So uh, when I worked with her, I took her through um, this course I created with Chase Hughes. So Chase is a world leader in behavioral profiling. We partnered up in business back in 2019. And he's got, you know, $30 million worth of government backed research. He's trained CIA level agents. You know, <laughs> we basically use his, um, his, um, his research. So I shared with her how she could ident obviously identify that he was a narcissist, but also how to disarm him. And uh, cut a long story short, the divorce went a lot easier. And um, the kids have just had the best summer holiday of their lives because even they got to learn how to use the techniques too. <laughs> to the point where the dad wants to prove that they were, you know, that the dad was the best dad possible and took him to all these wonderful places over the summer holidays. <laughs> so the kids have a better relationship with their dad as a result and also have like a fantastic, you know, fantastic school holiday with him. But from her going from those kind of patterns and those horrible narcissistic relationships, she's now in a place where she's actually changed careers. She's um, uh, started dating again. So this is very, very recent. So um, um, and she's feeling a lot more confident in terms of meeting the right person, which is brilliant. And she's literally only completed the program, gosh, about a couple of weeks ago. So she's already from, you know, within just a few short months, going from this place of messy divorce to calm, kids are happy, kids are safe, new career, <laughs> new, new life, new uh, apartment, and uh, yeah, and right. a happier dating life. <laughs> So, I mean, with that, I mean, you're talking about narcissists, right? And, and, and just to be frank, I mean, you deal with a lot of executives, you deal with like, like a lot of corporate people. And just to be frank, when you get to the particular executive level, whether you're a president or a VP or a chief financial officer, whatever it is, narcissism is kind of the definition underneath those profiles to kind of run a company and run it successfully. So on one side of their brain, they're programmed to be that. But then you're trying to retrain them on the other side for their family life to be uniquely different. Does that cause any conflict when you're dealing with like A type personalities? Well, the funny thing is, it's that so narcissism is very different to, you know, someone who's, who's a genuine narcissist is very different to someone who's got narcissistic traits. Okay. So narcissistic traits, we all have them. <laughs> we, all, we all love being told how great we are, how important we are, and how amazing we are, and all those different things. We all love to have a certain level of control. But it's when um, uh, these traits are triggered where we don't have the empathy behind it at all for people. And that's constant. That's not just something we dip in and out of. But you're right, you know, narcissists tend to be more in leadership positions. So you usually find narcissists and psychopaths tend to be in positions of power. Um, I mean, in particular, psychopaths, they're brilliant um, within the military. They are absolutely brilliant as surgeons. You have a lot of psychopathic surgeons because they can switch off the empathy, which allows them to do their job. Um, uh, so there's, there's definitely a place for them in society but it just gets a little bit dangerous when it comes to relationships just because when we don't have empathy there's not boundaries to be adhered to so if we don't feel that empathy or feel sad for someone or feel happy for someone it becomes really hard to connect so when we don't have that connection we don't have anything we can build upon we don't have boundaries. We don't have the respect for one another. We don't have that, you know, the foundational piece to be able to, re to build a relationship. And we often find that narcissists and psychopaths tend to be great cult leaders as well. So I don't know how much you know about cults, <laughs> but we also um, refer to narcissistic relationships as a two-person cult hmm. because the level of belief programming which is created during those relationships that has to be undone in order for that person to reclaim their mind, their identity, their body, everything. Yeah, I mean, now, now that you said that, and, I, and, I, and I'm a really big visual person, so I'm like mm -hmm. fragmented in my like different parts of thinking about leaders that, that, that we've seen in our time frame and what you've just described, and I'll say it, I'll be very frank, right? You've just described Steve Jobs from Apple's, right? I mean, like literally, <laughs> He, he, he's <laughs> profound in what he's done, but in his outside life, it was completely like, what the hell is going on? And then also with his employees, it was completely, 
but he's dead and gone and he's like a legend for the industry at this point in time so he has people that love him for what he's done but yeah. on that journey he broke a lot of eggs yeah so, so i don't know too much about his journey so i'll have to look into that i'll be very curious to have a look with the with that lens <laughs> yeah definitely definitely just like i said i just the first person that popped in my head was like wow she's just defined steve jobs and everyone with apple phones right now are probably like cursing me out but in reality <laughs> It's beef. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go into like, like, so obviously you've been on this journey for a period of time, right? Somebody's listening to this, this particular episode and they're going to be like, wow, she's a perfectionist in dating. She has like all this data, all this analyzing information behind her and the stories to back it as well. But how long have you been on this journey? Like, you know, from start to finish to where you are, like how many years have you been doing what you're doing? Yeah, like I would say... Yeah, just just over 10 years which is just insane <laughs> wow 10 years so let's say if if you could you know be a psychopath and travel back in time right let's say like that's that's a real thing that could really happen and you could whisper something in your ear at any given time in your life what would you say to yourself to change the outcome to make it happen a lot faster Ooh, yeah i would i would say it's like this saying, before you, before you can have, you must become. Mm-hmm. And I believe that everything that happens in our life literally comes back to our identity. Mm-hmm. So if there's a way to really understand who you are, what you stand for, and then being able to stand behind that 110%, no matter what, mm-hmm. that's going to help with a lot of... Um, a lot of life events whether that's relationships whether that's work and I think this is the thing you know when we have a look at things like social conformity we want to sort of pigeon out pigeonhole ourselves in a certain box to try and fit into society versus actually going okay well what works for me and being comfortable enough to accept that that's you that's what you want cool you just need to stand behind it nice very nice so, I mean, let's just, just go back in time again, right? I mean, as a kid, you were talking about like your journey. You talked about some of the hurdles you've overcame with dealing with dating. Let's mm-hmm. talk about your family a little bit. Like, obviously you're an entrepreneur and you figured out like a unique niche, right? I mean, dating is usually mm-hmm. associated to going out and having coffee, setting up speed dating or an app. So you're kind of stepping into the space as an individual to help someone. So let's talk about like, is anybody in your family an entrepreneur where are you getting your entrepreneurial spirit from (laughs) oh goodness me I I would say yeah I'd say a good mix between my mom and my dad so my my dad always had it was always very very successful within corporate and when he retired he was just like right cool we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get um two uh, two small shops in the in the local town village like and we lived in this real cute little you know countryside um you know imagine a victorian village type thing it was just so oldie woldy back in time that kind of thing and the two businesses were um, an old an old victorian sweet shop and the other one was like you know just a uh, like a jewelry shop <laughs> and um, uh, so I got to see from the ages of like 15, 16, how, you know, businesses worked at quite a, a close level to the point where I was running both of them on my own at 16, 17 and loved it. Wow. So, um, yeah, I kind of I kind of left that when I became um, qualified as an accountant. And then there was like, oh, that's that niggly thing of like, oh, there's something missing. <laughs> I don't want to be stuck and glued to my calculator and spreadsheets for the, for the rest of my life. I need to be doing something else. Wow. So, um, and then that's how everything unfolded. <laughs> right. nice. So let's just, just dive into that a little bit more, right? So like, you know, that's growing up and that, that's what your experience was. So now that you're an adult, like what is like your work-life family balance look like today? Yeah, um, it's quite fun actually. My partner and I, we're both, um, we both have our own businesses. So we have such a passion to help people. So we, we do actually work a lot, um, um, but 
<laughs> yeah, I'd say I'd say 70 percent of our time is actually dedicated to work. But we have we do. We are so good at carving out that time for the pair of us and also as individuals as well. And I think people tend to forget in relationships that you're an individual. You're not this, you know, suddenly this couple that have just merged together at this one person. <laughs> So when um, there's a good balance of, you know, work, couple time and, um, you know, individual time. And then, of course, we've got a dog as well called Darcy. So she's um, she gets a lot of bad time, too. <laughs> Very nice. So taking Darcy on on her morning walks, what are morning rituals and morning routines do you do on a day to day basis? Yeah, I love I love um, doing two things because I think it really sets you up for the day. And. The first thing is a gratitude. Like I will usually, before I even get out of bed, I will list between five or 10 things that I'm really grateful for. So whether that's just something like I'm grateful for my health or wow, you know, there's so, you know, sunny today, I'm grateful it's going to be a beautiful day or, or clients or whatever it might be that's really inspiring me. So before I even get out, I'm already like this, you know, great gratitude, I'm sorry, in this great grateful state then there's a coffee I need to have a proper coffee in the morning <laughs> and then a meditation because I think meditation um uh, I'm, I'm quite picky on the way I do meditation so I love the Dr Joe stuff or um uh, just something that's completely silent because I think it helps you to retune in with your body so I love to be able to do some sort of like body scan mm-hmm. because I think some people like I'm I'm quite an empathic person so um, I'm kind of one of those people that walk into the room and go, oh, I felt angry for some reason. Who's angry in the room? Because <laughs> I'll literally absorb it in. So it's a great way to sort of get in tune with like, what's my emotions? What's someone else's emotions? Um, uh, and what do I need? And there's actually a third practice that I've sort of brought in as well, um, which was recently advised to me and it's been brilliant. Mm-hmm. And it's um, how do I want today to feel? So it's like, okay, do I want it to feel energetic? Do I want it to feel, you know, happy? Do I want it to be calm? And then I'll kind of plan my day to to be able to go towards that emotion. And that's been an absolute game changer. You know, what do you want to feel? You know, how do you want today to feel that's going to feel really good to you and allow to plan it? And it, it gives that, it gives you that space to be a little bit spontaneous as well, because um I think since corporate, I cannot stand structure. I cannot stand the thought of having Groundhog Day. (laughs) So to be able to have that in place um, is freaking awesome. Nice. Very nice. Groundhog Day, that's a... That's one of those things that I think that people don't realize that, you know, pretty much waking up on a routine basis, going to work, it's kind yeah. of groundhog day. It's not to say it's bad, but if that's yeah. what you like, that's what you like. But if you're more of an entrepreneur, more of a free spirit, waking up in that environment will be like living in hell over and over again. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so my, my next question, right, is, is like one of my favorite questions. And I think like you're very astute with, with your information that, that you're delivering on the dating and the insight behind what you're doing, how you're doing it. So. It's a three-part question. The first part of the question is, what books have you read on your journey to kind of get you to where you are currently, right? Part two to this question is, what books or audio books are you currently listening to now? And part three to this question is, have you had an opportunity to author or write any books as of yet? Love these questions. Well, I love my books, as you can see. <laughs> I've got a few behind me. Um, and loads of audible. So I'd say at the start of my journey... I was actually reading a load of um, Brené Brown. Um, uh, oh God, I freaking loved her books because it really helped me to define um, connection. And I think that was something that I felt like I I missed a lot. So I think now my kind of journey and my purpose is sort of to help people to connect, whether it's for, to themselves or whether it's to someone else or whatever it might be. So that was certainly a game changer. Um the other book, one of the other books that was really great at the start of my journey, it was um, recommended to me. It was called The Gift of Fear. Mm. And that book was absolutely just fascinating. And it was written by Gavin Becker, who was head of security for the White House. I, can't, I don't know what years or anything like that. Um, I can't seem to remember. 
but he literally goes into all the different dangerous personality types, how to spot them, and also, um, uh, <laughs> you know, how to sort of deal with those situations and how to trust your intuition, which was just fascinating. Um, what am I reading now? Um, so there's a few books I'm reading. I like to listen to a few different things all at the same time. There's one that was recommended to me, which is called um, A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. uh, so you end up listening to like, there's loads of chapters. You end up listening to a chapter each day, which is fascinating. Um, another one I'm listening to um, is by Chris Habnagy. Uh, it's called Human Hacking. <laughs> and uh, the tagline is to leave people better than you found them. And I've personally interviewed Chris Habnagy and he's huge within the social engineering industry, like absolutely huge. And he's probably one of the most ethical people within the industry that you could possibly know. Um, and I might have a pot, an opportunity to be mentored personally by him as well. So I'm super excited about that. Very nice. Yeah, like thrilled. And then the other one, which is like completely like more towards the dating, but very um, different is, it's called When He's Married to Mom. <laughs> It's got the cringiest title, but it talks a lot about um, enmeshment in relationships and how that can that can affect you know men and women, which is absolutely fascinating. It comes back to um, children who have grown up who haven't had the space to create their own identities because they've had to play a role for their parents in order to be you know loved or appreciated. So it's like actually going into how you help people create their identities so they actually feel like they can, you know, be free within themselves, basically, which is so important when it comes to relationships. Oh, wow. So like the other question is, have you had an opportunity? And I'm hoping the answer is going to be yes. Have you written any books yet? <laughs> I am actually um, uh, writing my first one. So fingers crossed we should be releasing that in February 2022. <laughs> right. So let me get, is that about dating? It is, yeah. So literally it goes into everything from healing, creating your identity, to creating your own dating strategy, and then also to be able to create that healthy relationship with someone. Very nice, very nice. So right now you're based out of the UK, right? So you're, you're right across the pond. So my next question is, is like, okay, in the next 20 years, where do you see yourself? Oh, gosh. Yeah, like location-wise, it's quite funny. I love the countryside, but there's a part of me that can kind of see myself. You know, those beautiful... Um, oh, gosh, you get those beautiful... Uh, I don't know even what they're called. Is it like beach fillers or something like that? You'd usually get in like uh, like California. Is it California? I'm rubbish with geography. The near beach, near water. Yeah, yeah. So it's I like Hawaii, just... Florida, California. Yeah, that's it exactly. And I can kind of envisage, you know, envisage some of that something a little bit like that for some reason, which is quite different for me because I'm very much a country girl. Um, and yeah, I can uh, the. I can see the business just being absolutely huge because we've literally doubled in size um, uh, since we since we started. Like we've doubled in size every year since we since we first started. So um, yeah, <laughs> I think there's going to be big things to come. <laughs> so I mean, you're talking about doubling in size, right? So let's just talk about like, like who's your ideal avatar customer? Is it female? Is it an executive boss? Like who do you get the most results from? Yeah, so um, I tend to work with um, more female, although I do work with men, um, but women who are either in like leadership positions quite high up within their careers, um, who are just looking to uh, ensure that they're not wasting time when it comes to dating or being with the wrong one. Because, you know, you think about it, you can end up wasting your, you know, status, your name, your time, your emotions, your money, all these different things if you end up um, in the wrong relationship. So, yeah. Very, very interesting. So let's just, just spin on it. Let's take some more of that, right? So if you could leave an insightful last words of wisdom to that particular person, to that avatar, what would you tell them to help them to continue on their success journeys? Mm, be true to yourself. Wow. Because often, you know, 
the main reason why most people go into the wrong relationships is not because they didn't know it was the wrong relationship. It's because they decided to ignore what was coming up for them at the start of that relationship. Very interesting. So let's just dive into like, like structuring what you do a little bit, right? So I would think there are just some systems behind the scenes that you're utilizing, maybe even some software. So let's talk about like what software do, would you, do you use on a day-to-day -day basis that you would not be able to do what you're doing without having access to it? <laughs> I love the tech. Um, I personally use um, Kartra and that was after I dived into looking at, you know, working with Kajabi and all these different things. Kartra I find is amazing, especially when it comes to analytics and things like that. So it does all your emails and literally everything. Um, and the most recent one, that I absolutely love. And it's not really like business crucial, but it's certainly good for like time management mm -hmm. is Clockify. Hmm. And it literally just measures what you're spending most of your time on and also how long you've been working for. And I think that's so useful, like especially when you're, when you're um, you know, running a business to find out what are you spending most of your time on? So you're able to, um, you know, either work more efficiently or, you know, you can actually start to look at what you need to delegate out as well. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. So, I mean, with that being said, if someone is listening and they want to get in contact with you, like, obviously, you know, no names need to be televised, right? And they want to contact you. And I'm thinking, obviously, you have privacy behind the scenes. How do they get in contact with you? Where are you on social media? How could they find you? Yeah, I think the best place would be our website. So that's lovewithintelligence.com. Um, we've got a load of trainings on there, including um, how to meet the one webinar. And that literally goes through our compatibility matrix, which we allow our paid clients to go through. So it's a pretty good value packed webinar. Um, we're also on Facebook, also on YouTube. We're also on Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, so a few different social media platforms all underneath um, at Love with Intelligence. Nice, nice. So another question like with that right with we're in like the the time of covid like mm -hmm. how does that really work with dating i mean obviously you could do online you could do zoom but you know are you touching on that topic about you know safety behind the scenes and how does someone even approach or meet someone in person yes yes for sure so we we do a depending on what, what the restrictions are so we we tend to prefer to work on a more org organic basis where you meet people like whether it's a few hobbies or different things because it tends to be a better way to meet someone um online it tends to be a bit of a jumble sale it's not to say that it doesn't work but you've got a bit of sieving to go through in terms of meeting someone, those similar beliefs, values, all those different things. So with online dating, there's a few different things that you can look out for. And one of the compatibility things, you know, compatibility elements on the matrix that we talk about is um, lifestyle and interests. Mm -hmm. Because the nice thing is when you have a look at a dating profile, this person is basically going, here, here's a snippet of my life. <laughs> and um, even from just a few photos, you can go, okay, well, this person goes to the gym or, okay, this person, they dress really smart or this person, they're more hippie or this person's this or whatever it might be. And you can get a feel of whether that person could actually fit into your life or not. And that's kind of the, the one of the best ways to, you know, filter out people in terms of, you know, if someone's right for you or not. The other thing, because we often we've sort of touched on um, narcissism and you know people who aren't necessarily emotionally healthy to have a relationship with we tend to have a look at facial expressions so we talk about a facial range and this is talking about whether you can see if that person's genuinely smiling or not or frowning or whatever it is which is away from an, a neutral face i mean that'd be funny we've all seen like um i don't know if you do you call them mug shots over in the u.s oh yeah they're mug shots for sure. <laughs> yeah it's like okay does this person look like they've got a mug shot for a date even a dating profile because if we're seeing lack of empathy there that can be um a huge red flag another thing that we tend to look for as well is when we're having a conversation with someone it's how much the conversation, you know, flows. 
And what I mean by that as well is, you know, in the beginning, we tend to talk about ourselves a lot, but usually it ends up with a question talking about the other person. So if it becomes too much about them, that can be a huge red flag as well, because if you're in this place of, okay, I need to show you my massive status and how amazing I am, and I need you to tell me all these different things of how amazing I am, you're going to create and, and idolize this person from the very beginning of dating them, which can also sort of force it into something that's quite um, almost like a codependent relationship, which obviously isn't very healthy in terms of relationships. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's definitely funny that, that you brought up smiling. Like me and my wife, we make fun of the smiling thing on a routine basis. Like we drive through our neighborhood and we we'll drive through our neighborhood. There's always this older gentleman that's mowing his lawn and he's serious. And like, I'm a serious person. He's always serious, but guarantee every time you drive by, he goes from serious to, and it's like, oh. I don't know if it's real or not. It's just kind of like, it's so, cr- it's, it's so creepy, but he does it so routinely that it's kind of like, it's almost yes. believable, but it's scary at the same time. I was like, I never want to piss that guy off because his smile is like a switch that he turns on and turns off. So, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely a creepy thing. So um, I love that because, um, so basically this is another thing that you can actually use to see if someone's genuinely got empathy or not. So you notice with that guy, you know, you talk about, like, he switches it on and switches it off, you know, it shows that it's not a genuine rem- emotion, which gives me this, this um, in, you know, instantly information to say this person doesn't have an empathy. Because if we have a genuine facial expression, mm-hmm. um, so if I tell you like, a really sad story, mm-hmm. you're not going to suddenly go from really sad to, hey, let's talk about this instead then. And it shows that there's this, um, this lack of empathy and connection. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit like... You know, we've all been in in a situation where we've been at a party or something like that, and there's someone that we don't really like, and they look over and they smile at you, and you smile back, and as soon as they've turned their face, it's like, oof, gone. And that shows like a disingenuine, you know, facial expression. So if you see that a lot within someone, it can actually say that there's narcissistic or psychopathic traits there. And people often forget there's 2% of the population have been clinically diagnosed as um as narcissists nice so, nice yeah. that, that's, that's that's kind of weird so I, I, obviously my wife is gonna listen to this episode so i just want to let her remind her that like my original theory was correct he probably has dead bodies in his freezer in his basement right now so just continue to keep smiling and keep driving by do not stop okay um, just don't stop that's right <laughs> smile and keep on moving so so go oh, into man. like some bonus questions i got some bonus questions for you right and i think Like, what is your most significant achievement to date? Oh, (laughs) oh my gosh. I I would say, oh gosh, I would say within two years of setting up my business, no, one year, one year of setting up a business to partner up with a world leader in behavioral profiling is a pretty, it's pretty up there for me. Um, yeah, and within that same year, being featured in national and international press. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Got another bonus question for you. So, if you could spend 24 hours in one day with anyone, dead or alive, uninterrupted for those 24 hours, who would it be and why? Oh, gosh. I'm, I'm cringing saying this one. <laughs> um, Oh gosh, it, it it would be. I am going to cringe saying this out loud, but Arnold Schwarzenegger, because Arnold. he yes, I think he's freaking amazing. He's kind of one of these people that it doesn't matter whatever he does, he literally gives it his all, and I just love to be around that kind of energy and ask him just a crazy amount of questions because he's pretty freaking impressive. Even even as a, you know, I don't know how old he is. Isn't he, is he even in his seventies now or something crazy? He's up there. Yeah. He's up there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think he, he, I think he'd be an interesting guy to get to know. And he's mastered his smiling as well. <laughs> yes. Yes. He, does, he has a political smile down pack, hundred so. percent. Yes, completely. <laughs> 
So going into closing, man, every time I, I do these podcasts, I, I love to give whoever I am interviewing the opportunity to become the host of the show. The microphone is yours. The show is yours. Do you have any questions that you would like to ask me? Oh, I would say, what was the passion or inspiration that led you to create this podcast? Believe it or not, I had a stroke in 2018. And, and I always say that because that's the moment of Eureka. I mean, 18 years before it, I was always a business person, savvy in what I was doing, but waking up and realizing that I almost died. And I was like, kind of figuring out I'm always working, but what's the legacy I'm leaving behind? What's the voice of reasoning? What's, where's the breadcrumbs? I was doing all these different do- things, but I wasn't really documenting it. So now I rebranded myself, you know, written about eight books at this point in time, I've wow. made this podcast to where it's at the top 1% globally right now. And I'm leaving behind my voice and your voice for other entrepreneurs and for our kids and for my kids and for other kids down the road and great, great grandkids to kind of hear these messaging, hear these stories and take these stories of inspiration and create their journeys to success. Mm, I freaking love that. I absolutely love that. Cause I think it's such a, when you have those kind of like life-changing moments, it really gets you questioning absolutely freaking everything. So for you then, was it kind of like that, you know, light switch thing of like, okay, well, business isn't, you know, business, that previous life's not important anymore. And it's suddenly this I want to go ahead and do, or was it gradual? It was one of the things, I mean, literally, you know, I think through and through, I was born to be a business person. I didn't realize it until I was a business person. So once I woke up in a hospital and I'm just like, okay, how long do I need? And, and I didn't realize how bad it was. You know, like half my right side was shot. My face was drooping and, you know, I could barely walk. So I had to kind of work all that back. And I was like, okay, give me a few days. <laughs> Literally, I was like, give me a few days and I'm gonna get my ass out this hospital. And then while I'm in the hospital trying to walk and holding on to rails, I was like, okay, what's my next step? The second I get out of the hospital, what's the first thing I'm going to do? And then I began searching and started educating myself more so on how to, I was a branding guy already, but I was doing it for everyone else. I was like, how do I do it for myself? What will be a good brand for me? And what would I use that brand to do? Freaking love that. Absolutely love that. I think it just, yeah. I think the next question I want to ask is like, what did that teach you about you? The thing about me is that obviously I'm not a quitter. I'm resilient as hell. And, you know, (laughs) time is short, but time goes on forever, right? I mean, literally, once I'm dead and gone, like this content, like these videos, these audio files will potentially live on for, for decades, centuries after I'm dead and gone. So it's once you realize that, that we're all going to die, what are you going to leave behind? And I think a lot of people, they don't take pictures. They don't create video. You don't create, you're not just creating content to create content. You're creating content in a world that allows you to create content. That way you can pass that torch down. So a hundred years from now, your grandkids, your great, great grandkids will know exactly who you are versus trying to search and doing DNA tests to figure out who their great, great grandparents were. Now I can deliver that to them. I freaking love that. Yeah, I freaking love your energy. You're so, so, so freaking inspirational. So thank you so much um, uh, yeah, for us to have this, uh, this awesome chat today. So thank Ooh. you. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time out your schedule. I think it's probably going into afternoon time over in UK right now, right? So It is indeed. Yeah, 3, 3 p.m. Nice. 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 Well, I'm not going to suck up any more of your time. I appreciate that the energy that you brought to the table, the information that you delivered. And again, I, like I said in the beginning of this podcast, if you're an individual and you want to grow a business, like growing a business by yourself without having the fruits of your labor being alongside you or working with you, you have to partner with the right people. And finding the right people can be very difficult in today's world. So why not use and leverage someone like the dating boss herself? <laughs> Exactly. (laughs) Great. S.A. Grant, over and out.